Hi, uh, in this video, I'll be going over a playoff game between Ultra Gunner and uh, Kitten Overlord, aka Mal. Uh, this game is a very interesting matchup due to the fact that both players are quote unquote AoE players. So, in a sense, this is the battle of uh, the AoE. So, without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. First man Z2. Z2 is a very good first pick regardless of your box comp due to the fact that she can pretty much AoE and single target. The Rosen does nullify uh, some of the potential AoE effectiveness here. However, banning out the tanks is also important because then that leaves, uh, uh, leaves Mal with options to pick mages. Which uh, he does pick. Ultra gonna proceeds to ban out the other two mages. Well, technically Kurtz is also another mage. Kitten Overlord is now um, tankless unless he decides to pick Polly. And he does pick Polly. Uh, we'll see if he does end up bringing the guard skill. Ricky is also a unit that has guard. Polly also has guard too, so we'll see what Ultra Gunner decides to do with his skills. Joe jo and Connie, okay. That's an interesting pick. Florentia, very interesting pick here. He, Florentia is not gonna have a faction buff. Okay, so Polly does bring guard. Uh, Colter with single target. Uh, makes sense against a Rosen team. Single target, single target, single target. Uh, Sorks as opposed to wizard or firebrands. Uh, makes sense. Ricky is physical heavy, physical heavy. So picking a, a magic dealing troop makes sense. Uh, so I, it's either gonna be Storks or I think Wizards. Wizards do have uh, less maximum damage, but uh, Storks does have that 100 HP requirement. Uh, JC with uh, single target and single target. Let's see what uh, Ultra Gunner has. Double AOE. Ricky with AOE and a single target. Florentia with AOE and heal, pretty standard. Rosen, oh okay, sorry, Florentia does have the FB from Rosen, my mistake. Uh, 3C, and single target and pro tag. Uh, the pro tag buff is for Ricky, I assume. Polly is not pro tag from what I remember. Turn one jump. This is only gonna stun one person. I'm assuming the jump is to set up other units. Let's see who it's for. I think it's to set up, uh, uh, so Kulter, yeah, so Kulter can reach. Yeah, so it's to set up Kulter for a hit on someone. So yeah, Kulter does go in without mass attack. Tries to kill the Ricky, does not do a lot of damage. Uh, this is this is not a team at Ricky. Interesting enough. Uh, this skill is magic, does magic damage. Let's just take a look at the ticks. Well, to be fair, 1300 int is not a lot of int. So maybe that's why this is, uh... This is too exp to be expected. Gets a good uh, lucky clock.
Uh, move both summons closer. This is to allow uh, Luke to do the swap later, to my understanding, and kill someone. Uh, moving to Joe and Connie, this is, let's see, this is four blocks. I don't think she can reach, yeah. So the the culture does end up dying. Is able to kill uh the poly. Uh, let's just see how tanky the poly is, because that does not look very tanky. Seven hundred twenty-eight. Just take a look before you got hit with the two AoEs. 850. Okay, I, I'm gonna say this is not a super tanky poly. 12k. Yeah, for sure. This is, I think, a attack heavy poly. So yeah, the poly dies. Someone gets stunned. This prevents Luke from being able to reach the other units. Polly also has two lives, so even if this life does end up uh, going away, he, he he is she is gonna be able to kill off the mage. I mean the Lucretia summon. So now uh, Meow's Luke is at a range disadvantage. No longer has the. Uh, the, 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 the summon to increase her span. Ares can outrange Luke. So it's just a matter of uh, Ultra Gunner staying out of range of the Luke and making sure uh, he gets jumped. Of course, he does have an advantage because of the floor act again with the uh, Rosen faction buff, which hasn't been applied yet, but eventually. Ultra Gunner should be able to get in position with the act again and kill the Luke. And after that's done, it should be game. I don't think anyone can kill the Ricky after Luke is dead. Yeah, there's there's no way for Mal to have his Luke uh, be able to reach up. Uh, uh, Ultra Gunner's units. Another clock. Very nice. I don't think the clock is that important in terms of this outcome of this game. Again, remember that the Ares has the single target, so so like like you see here, Ares is gonna be able to really hit Kitten's uh, units. Again, the fixed damage from uh, Ricky's uh, talent is very, <laughs> very, very strong here. And yeah, that is game. Uh, I think uh, the key. Well, the Clotair missing the kill was definitely very big. Uh, I see why Meow jumped jumped early because of the fact that Ultra Gunner might jump his Polly earlier if he didn't jump. So really, it's at a disadvantage. Like Meow could have, I guess, mass attacked the Colter, but then that gives Ultra Gunner uh, time to faction with with uh, Ares and move his Polly two blocks forward. So yeah, I, I think just. Uh, Good, uh, good choice of units from Ultra Gunner in that game. Very interesting choice of units. On to game two. Uh, so first man Rosen, very, uh, very, uh, int uh, I guess, a very logical band. So now the second best anti AOE healer, that being Elmo One.
So stacking up on the AOEs, uh, the Elmo is gonna be, uh, I think, gonna be a. The thing about AOE is, in my opinion, Rosen and Elmo both pretty much uh, kind of nullify uh, AOE boxes. That is, unless um, you have some way of getting, well, against Rosen, particularly, you have some way of getting rid of the stacks, which is with Bozo. But I've yet to see, uh, well, at least a playoff game where a Bozo has been played effectively to the extent, uh, with respect to, you know, fighting a Rosen and getting rid of the stacks with Bozo. So maybe we'll see something like that in further seasons. But again, I think a pure AoE box is not the best block. Well, there are very obvious counters. You know, Rosen is a pretty good counter. Elmo is a good counter. Elma. And of course, you know, the upcoming um, Annie 2.0 Awakener is going to be a really good counter. Uh, AoE, 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 with of course the single target. Uh, double AoE with Fireball, uh, AoE with Dark Creeper, Mass Attack for uh, units here. Let's see what uh, Ultra Gunner has. Z2 with double single target Air Slash, double single target. Uh, Aries is Tensei, if I remember correctly, so Hilda should give him the buff. Uh, Z2 is also Tensei. These are all Tensei units. Hel uh, Elma is also a Tensei unit. Very, uh, very good choice of synergy here, I would say, for Ultra Gunner. However, so the issue is, in my opinion, so when Elma drops her, uh, summon, as we'll see later, uh, I think, if I remember correctly, the summon prevents... Uh, provides an aura that prevents any form of uh, heal block So love wiener is not gonna be able to apply heal block on the ultra gunner units and I think that does uh, Does I wouldn't say completely counter this AOE barrage as you can see there's still five units that can AOE and there's only really uh, well two healers one healer That can full heal one AOE T just has a 3C, which is not too big of a heal. But you do have Z2 and uh, Aries, who will also both have revives and can uh, kill units. So this sets up uh, a Colter uh, turn 1 engage, hitting everybody. So Clotair goes through the portal. Again, uh, he has to go in, I think here. He he doesn't have the chance to mass attack with uh, Luke. Which maybe could might have been a better choice than to do the uh, teleport play. Unless Z2 can reach. Let's just see. Oh, okay, so Z2 can actually reach the Annie. I see why uh, he would do the teleport back. He doesn't want the Annie, uh, the Z2 to come in, kill the Annie, uh, and let T just have a free uh, teleport position to kill uh, someone else. So okay, it makes sense to retreat as opposed to mass attacking with Lucretia. So Clotair is gonna drop the AOE on everybody. So very interesting, we have a fixed immune uh, TGES. And I think it was also a fixed immune uh, Zerida. Let's just double check. This is a team of SS. Okay, it might be SSM. Uh, so this must be Medring, SSM La Lavina, SSM Zerida. And I guess the non SSM unit is Hilda. Interesting. Very interesting. So yeah, Elma drops the heal on the uh, the candle. Uh, where is the where is the thing that prevents uh, yo? Okay, grants all ally units within the three blocks man immunity to effects that prevent healing. That is from Candlelight Sanctuary. Yeah. So when she summons, uh, yeah. So can't prevent uh, can't heal block. Man.
kills the cold tear. Um, nice little breeze proc here. I think even without the breeze proc, her reach is. Yeah, he can still reach both units here. The real question was. Um, well, Luke can't reach. Uh, anybody with the AOE and Julian is not gonna able to increase the movement because uh, Luke cannot damage anyone. Okay, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty good spot for Ultra Gunner. Kills the summon. No skill needed. Drops the AOE. Does let the Julian have the ability to reach these units. But he should be able to kill someone here. See if Julian is gonna live. No, Julian does not live. Okay. Yeah, so pretty much game at this point. Uh, again, I think the Elma pick really messed up uh, uh, I think a big part of this AOE box that uh, Meow Sensei is running. Yeah. So no, not much here. Uh, the Z2 is just going to end up finishing this game. And that is game. A uh, very uh, interesting box that Ultra Gunner has. But again, I think this game is a very good showcase of uh, counters to a pure AoE box. Well, not pure, because you know you have these flex units in Jintoki, Z2, etc., etc. But again, I, I think it's an AoE-centric box. So yeah, congratulations to both players for advancing this far, and congratulations to Ultra Gunner for uh, winning the game. Uh, well, that'll be it for today. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.